Biostar TB250 BTC 6 times XFX RX480 8G Mining Rig Build. Here you can see everything I'm going to be using in the build. I've got 6 XFX 480 8G cards. Four of them are the black version, 1338 MHz cards, and two of them are the 1288 MHz cards. I'm going to be powering those with an EVGA 1300G2 power supply. And I'll be using the TB250 BTC Pro Biostar motherboard. I've got 4 gigabytes of DDR4 Micron RAM that's going to be going in there. And I'll be using a Skylake G3900 CPU. You can use a Skylake or Cabby Lake processor in this motherboard. I went with Skylake because it's cheaper and I can use Windows 7 and Windows 8 if I want to. I'll be using a 120 gigabyte M.2 SSD from Galaxy. This will save me one SATA cable from the power supply that I can use for my risers, of which I have four SATA powered 1 times to 16 times PCIe USB risers and two Molex powered 1 times to 16 times USB risers. I'm going to be doing this build the same as I did my 7 GPU build on the metal shelf. So I've got my base here. It's a PVC base that I've cut out. I have two power switches. One's going to be reset, one will be power. I have a bunch of plastic ties to keep everything nice and tidy and some screws for the motherboard. First, I'm going to mount my motherboard on the PVC base that I have. I'll just use the screwdriver to punch some holes into where I'm going to put the motherboard mounting screws. Once I've got those all done, I'll take the screwdriver and make the holes a little bit deeper, open them up. Next, I'll take those mounting screws and screw them into the PVC board. I just have this PVC board laying around. I can probably still build three or four more bases from other boards with what I have laying around. So I'm just making use of what I have. You, of course, can make use of what you have. You can buy something to mount your motherboard on. You can buy a frame or a case to mount your whole rig into. Now that I've got all the motherboard mounting screws on the PVC board, I'll put my motherboard on top and I'll start to screw the motherboard onto the base. Now that that's done, I'll put the CPU into its socket. I'll open up the socket. I'm going to take off the little plastic guard on the socket. I know you can just close it and it'll pop off, but I just like to take mine off before. When you're putting your CPU in, make sure you line the two triangles up. There's a little triangle on one corner of the socket on the board and one triangle on the CPU. Make sure those triangles line up. Now that the CPU is in there, I'll mount the heatsink. It already has thermal paste on the bottom of the heat sink, so I'm just going to put it right on. I'll press the pins down and then lock them into place and make sure it's on there good.
Once the heatsink is on, I'll take the power cable and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And then I'm just going to get these wires out of the way a little bit. I'll take a little plastic tie and tie them up. Now it's time to put the RAM in the motherboard. I've got my DDR4, 4 gigabyte micron stick of RAM. Make sure you line it up properly. There is a divot on one side of the RAM. Just push that in, it'll lock into place. Now I'm going to put my M.2 SSD on the board. I'll unscrew the M.2 screw. Slide my M.2 SSD into the slot and screw it into place. Now the motherboard's ready. So I've got my PSU already on my shelf rack. Got all the cables plugged in. Here is the motherboard. You can see that there are two Molex connectors on the board. And there's one SATA connector to power two of the USB ports on there. Those USB ports are not actual USB ports. They're only to power devices. So I'm not going to be using that. I'm also not going to be using the Molex connectors on the board. So I'll go ahead and I'll plug in my power and restart switches. I'll just kind of get the switches out of the way by sticking them through the shelf. Now I'll plug in the motherboard power, the 24 pin. Lock that into place. Then I'll take my CPU cable, two four pins, and plug that into the motherboard. That's all done. So the motherboard is now ready to accept the GPUs. Here I have a Molex cable. I'm going to tidy that up a little bit with a plastic tie. Then plug it into the Molex riser. Plug the riser into the GPU. Then I'll take my 6 plus 2 pin, 8 pin power cable and plug that into the GPU and then hang the GPU on the shelf on the rack. Again, I'll take the Molex cable, tidy it up with a plastic tie, plug that into the riser, plug the riser into the GPU, put the 6 plus 2 8 pin into the GPU and put it on the rack. Now I'm starting with my SATA cables. I'll tidy up the SATA cable a little bit with plastic tie, plug it into the riser, plug the riser into the GPU, Plug my 6 plus 2, my 8 pin into the GPU and put it on the rack. And I'll repeat this three more times. I like using the M.2 SSD because it allows each riser to have its own power cable. So there we go, that's all done. All six GPUs are set up. I'm just gonna tighten them to my shelf, to my rack with some plastic ties. Now I can go ahead and plug in the one times PCIe. Now I can go ahead and plug in the one times PCIe risers into the motherboard.
I'll connect a DVI to the GPU that's in the 16 time slot on the motherboard. And I'll plug in a keyboard, a mouse, and Ethernet cable. Power on the motherboard, fan spinning. All the GPUs are powered on. Fan spin, lights are on. Looks good. Good sign. One thing that I did was that I did update the BIOS to the most recent version, 330. I also went into the motherboard BIOS and enabled the mining mode. And I changed all of the one times PCIe slots to Gen 2. Here Windows is installing. Make sure to switch all those off. I've installed all my drivers and here I'm just updating the virtual memory, making sure that I have enough virtual memory to run six GPUs with Ethereum, with Claymore's Ethereum miner. And here you can see that it has picked up all six GPUs. I am using AMD drivers 16.11.4. That way I don't have to patch the drivers. I do prefer using the older drivers along with using the 400 series cards. The 500 series cards and patching the drivers can really be a pain. Here you can see that three of my cards are already modified. Three of them are not modified. So that's why three of them are running at 29 point plus. The others are running at 24 plus. Now, if you like this build and you want to see other TB250 builds, you can check out Eugene's channel. He's also built a rig with TB250. He helped me confirm a few things about the board, gave me some input on his build. So you can go check out his channel, check out his build. It might give you some more ideas. I'll put links to his channel and his videos in the description along with my build specifications. So I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped and thanks for watching.